All right, so what do we have here? We have an Atari XEGS. Uh, those among you who still have your faculties will be able to spot that straight away by the grey box and the pastel coloured buttons here. So this isn't going to be a how-to video so much as a look at this video because uh, I'm quite pleased with the way this one turned out. It's not fully finished in the, in the sense that it's not fully tidied up and whatnot yet or tested. I just finished it yesterday. That was my birthday treat to myself, finishing this machine. In fact, starting and finishing this machine, I managed to get the whole thing done in one day. And of course, after I uh, finished uh, working on this at about 10 o'clock at night, uh, I went into full birthday celebration mode with a chocolate biscuit and a cup of coffee uh, while sitting up here in the office on my own. Uh, yes, yeah, so what's this machine got in it? Uh, so if we look at the rear of the machine here, we can see there's been some changes. Uh, we've got uh, the RF modulator is gone, unfortunately the little icon uh, which denotes the modulator is still there. I would love to grind that off, but I really know of no way to uh, reproduce the, um, the sort of patina or the texture of the plastic. Once you've ground something off, it might end up looking worse than it does now. I don't know. Sure, can just straighten that out with the tap of a hammer. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I'll just tap it the other way. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, but that is definitely highly triggering. Nevertheless, anyway, the owner sent all the upgrades in with this machine, uh, including he even sent the uh, five pin DIN connector for his uh, legacy video connections. Of course, uh, out of the box, the XEGS has uh, mono audio on this jack here, RCA connector, and uh, composite video on this um, connector here and no S video, no YC video. So the owner wanted a standard uh, YC and composite video out uh, on this one. And he wanted a VBXE in the machine as well, and my usual technique of using a DIN 13. Uh, and he's bought the DIN 13 discard cable in readiness. Now since there's no longer any need for composite video out on this connector, because it's on this connector, we can use these two now as left and right audio. Uh, for those times when uh, the legacy output is being used uh, but stereo output is required from Pokemax which is inside the machine uh, and when we're using the uh, RGB video 15 kilohertz RGB VBXE video output uh, we've already got the same stereo channels uh, hooked up to the two corner pins here on this connector uh, so they're not needed so maximum flexibility we've got mono audio here We've got stereo audio here, and we've got stereo audio also on the RGB out, uh, which will go through SCART in this case, or you could use a cable which broke it out onto uh, whatever you wanted to do. Uh, so this, this seems to me a little bit less intrusive than the uh, headphone jack uh, idea. Uh, so yes, so let's have a look inside the machine. Uh, right, so if we lift the lid here, you can see uh, the tremendous mess, uh, rather the tremendous uh, number of upgrades inside. Uh, we have uh, Ultimate 1 Megabyte down here, we've got VBXE here, we've got Pokemax here, and we have UAV here. Now UAV of course is driving that uh, legacy monitor jack at the back there, uh, but even if we didn't have this, we can get pretty good quality YC video at the XEGS. Uh, I made a video on that earlier in the year, I think, uh, when I added S-Video uh, via an S-Video jack actually on an XEGS. You can tap the signals from the board, they're still there of course, even though it's composite only out of the box. And the video output was pretty nice, but of course not as nice as you get with UEV. We've got Pokemax here, this is using the MO2 chip, it has stereo and Covox core. Obviously got our uh, stereo outputs running to the back here. So these uh, are the two um, RCA connectors, which uh, I removed the inductors there and just wired the stereo outputs to the... Uh, the back end of the uh, connector there. So we've got our left and right, well left and right rather, audio and that is jumped across to the underneath of the uh, DIN 13 connector under the back of uh, Ultimate One Megabyte. So uh, that's your audio. Alright, so here we are down at the front of the machine. We've got XE style VBXE. 
and we have uh, Pokemax as mentioned before. In the bottom corner we have uh, UAV. Now it took a little while to figure out uh, how to put UAV in this machine because of course we've got this tremendous 39, 40 page, uh, was it 40 page, four, oh, 43 page, uh, well 44 if you count the, yes 44 if you count the back cover, 44 page instruction uh, installation manual for UAV here and uh, very very nice it is too, very very detailed, tremendous amount of detail in this uh, booklet uh, but uh, absolutely no way in the document is uh, the XEGS mentioned that I could tell, uh, absolutely no way whatsoever so I think we need a, an extra chapter here, maybe you know 10 or 20 pages um, on the uh, XEGS installation just for basically for the um, the jumper positions I'll show you the jumpers actually so here's a close-up shot of the jumper configuration for the XEGS anyway uh, if it's useful because it's I had to google for this the first uh, hit I got was a topic at Atari age which had the, the wrong jumpers uh, but there's somebody I forget who it is I'll try and remember to put the notes in the uh, a link in the video description. Somebody on Atari Age actually did a little picture blog um, about how he installed this. So that's where I got the jumper configuration from but you couldn't actually see from his photos where the, where the colour input was. The colour input is just from the top of that resistor R87. Um, so you take your colour input from the top of R87 or the back and uh, hopefully the jumper positions are clear there. We've got one there, we've got one there, one there, and one there, and one there. You'll notice also that I got rid of the terminal block on the UEV, which I always do. I just think the terminal block is awful. Probably easier to connect, I suppose, um, if you don't want to solder anything. But So uh, that comes off and we get a six pin header and a nice uh, DuPont connector there, which I find far preferable and uh, a lot less bulky so there we go so quite a powerful little machine this one um, of course we've got the usual meandering ultimate one megabyte cable here because of the screw pillar that goes right through the middle of the book but everything just went together perfectly on this one it was very made a nice change right I'm going to update the BIOS on this because just to account for the pokey max and whatnot I haven't actually released this firmware yet, but uh, there's just been so much to do with side 3 and stuff. I'm going to uh, get it all properly updated shortly, probably over Christmas with a bit of luck. So let's apply this uh, update. Here the uh, machine is correctly identified as an XEGS. We've got the little jumper on the XEGS pins of the uh, Ultimate One Megabyte. We can see that we've got side and Pokemax as the plug-in and everything else looks to be in order we've got the Pokemax MO2 chip very good uh, stereo and Covox I've just noticed that actually that, that I like that little two letter code there for the core that's good I use exactly the same idea in the plugins itself actually it's just very very interesting right so uh, and we have Pokey configuration here uh, single or dual will enable the Covox and of course this being an XEGS we've got access to our uh, missile command ROM and such like so we'll save that right so I'm going to test things with the side 2 briefly here now since we've got stereo enabled but we're using the legacy video I'm going to unplug that and I'm going to plug that in there and I'm going to plug that in there so we've taken the stereo audio using um, an RCA cable so let's see how that works out and let's try yump and find it there we are stereo detected so we should hear stereo coming out of there now if we switch over to SCART input That's the same thing, now we're getting stereo through the uh, DIN 13 SCART cable. Alright, so since we're looking at the uh, VBXE output, let's try um, a VBXE title, let's try uh, old school lemurs the VBXE.
Now, of course, the other thing worth mentioning here is that with the addition of a side two cartridge or a side three cartridge, you have a full OS compliant uh, hard disk drive, which I think uh, put some partitions on here. Here we go. Of course, we also have the built in high speed SIO driver here, which I will uh, demonstrate. So I've just got the firmware uh, ETR connected via SIO to PC. And I think I've got RW test on drive C, so I'm going to do C, RW test E. So as you can see, we get very nice high speed SIO there, Divisor 0, uh, 5, nearly 6K per second writing and almost 9 kilobytes per second reads. My goodness me. Right, so I thought what we could do, <coughs> since we've got a machine here with Kovox built into it, uh, which we can verify here. Dual pokey Kovox sample enabled and this uh, Kovox registers are at D280 uh, in hex. So if we go into the loader we can actually run uh, NeoTracker. So I've installed a uh, NeoTracker with the correct uh, address. And if we go control and load, uh, it's actually opened the root directory, but never mind. So this is using the built-in FAT uh, file system driver in the loader. So I think we have uh, music. Uh, I think it's in there. There we go. come out of that try a different one one of them had a nice uh, graphical display while it was playing I can't remember which one it was now I wonder if I've turned that off by mistake very good very convenient enigma That sounds pretty good. It's it's got a bit of a background hiss. It's not really my uh, bag, but uh, yeah. it's very good. Now just to underline the fact that if we use the XEGS operating system, which is built into the ROM that I distribute, this will behave exactly like a stock XEGS, uh, providing a turn off uh, various things. Yes, so we can turn off the BIOS logo so that it just comes up on, but I'm not going to bother with that. So I'll turn it off, I'll take the keyboard out and turn it back on again. And we should get missile command, which we do. So yes, I'm very pleased with the way this one turned out. Uh, I mean, look at all the connectivity on the back here. Marvellous, isn't it? So there we have it. One Atari XEGS with uh, VBXE, UEV, Pokemax, and Ultimate One Megabyte. And very nice it is too. Um, of course, you could opt for something like uh, Sophia 2, if you wanted to, it'd be a little bit more difficult to fit it all in alongside all this other stuff, but I'm sure we could find a way. But VBXE is still a very powerful uh, upgrade, as you can see there. The additional uh, graphical capabilities shown off by the old school demo, which you don't get with um, Sophia. So you pays your money and he takes your choice. You want either want the convenience of digital output. Uh, which you get with Sophia, uh, or you want the blitter and the uh, high color depth, 640 by 200, 400 even if you use interlaced video, that you get with VBXE, both very nice upgrades. Pokemax is currently the kind of the preeminent uh, Pokey replacement, uh, come Stereo, come Quad, Kovox, Sid, yeah, 
really capable device, very keenly priced as well, but we'll be having more stereo devices and such coming out shortly from, uh, from the candle area and the Lotharic side of things. So lots and lots of different stuff uh, to look forward to. Of course, this machine will also work with Psi 3. And of course, we can do a firmware update on the Ultimate One Megabyte to suit that device as well. It's so capable now, it does pretty much everything. And you could you could stick a Fuji net in the back if you wanted uh, network access and all that sort of thing. So it's, uh, it's kind of appealing. It's actually the footprint by the time you've attached the keyboard to the XEGS, it's actually enormous. It's going to bring the thing out as I say, apologies again for the nasty yellowed keyboard, but it's going to bring the thing out. It's going to, it's kind of 1200XL sized. It's absolutely enormous. But yes, a tremendously powerful uh, little machine, this one. Very happy with it, and I'm sure the owner will love it as well. It's been very stable as well, no surprises. So hopefully the owner's got a cleaner, less yellow looking keyboard than mine. And it'll look very nice when it's sitting back on his desk. So yes, if you uh, like the look of what you've seen here and you want something similar, uh, do get in touch. If you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up. Uh, do keep subscribing. We're almost at one and a half thousand subscribers now. It'd be nice to maybe get to the magic too. Be a nice milestone. So thank you very much for watching. Stay radical. Stay Atari. Do something exciting today. And remember, nobody lives forever. So with that in mind, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.